With great power comes great responsibility. Modern fast cars are so powerful that if you're not careful, you can get into a whole load of trouble. Fast cars, they need proper driving skills and that is what we are learning today. Another fun fact, the A45S, I haven't driven this AMG yet. A special car needs a special occasion and I'm going to pop my cherry today, particularly since this car has drift mode and we are at the drift track. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start with the basics in the A35 AMG. The first thing you want to learn about your performance car is how to launch it. Now both the A35 and the A45S have launch control. On the A35, active indicator is easy. Use the dynamic mode selector, go to Sport Plus and that's it. Left foot on the brake, get it into drive, right flat on the gas, race start it says, release the brake and you get a full pause standing start. 0 to 100 in 4.8 seconds. The A35, it launches hard and fast. The formatic, it delivers grip like you would not believe. And the computers, it decides just how much grip is available, just how much power to meter out and gives you the best possible launch time. Now that you know how to go fast, you need to know how to use the brakes properly. All these performance cars, they get big brakes, ABS, ESP. So it's not that hard to use the brakes. In fact, it is impossible to lock up the brakes. But to use the brakes effectively means you need to learn a few skills like threshold braking. Threshold braking is where you use the maximum braking force, but just before the ABS intervenes. And that's why the name. Step one is to accelerate to 100 and then stand on the brakes and understand how heavily ABS kicks in. So it's at 100. You can hear the ABS juddering, the hazards come on and you can feel the intensity of the braking force. And now comes threshold braking. So here again you accelerate to 100 but I suggest you start it at say 80 and then you brake without the ABS kicking in. So basically you're braking smoothly so that the ABS hasn't kicked in, but you've taken the same amount of distance as you would have with the ABS activated. Just use your right foot to modulate the brakes. You can also do it with your left foot, but you need good feel in your left foot. So if you've done motorsport or if you've been using left foot braking, then you will have the feel in your left foot. Otherwise, I would recommend that you just use your right foot. And why is this important? I'll just give you one quick example. Modern race cars also have ABS, but if you use full ABS braking, you do not get a lap time. If you use threshold braking, that's when you get a proper lap time. And that segues us into trail braking. Now that you've mastered acceleration and braking, now is the time to go around corners. Honestly, anybody can go fast in a straight line, but around corners, that's where the real skill comes into play. Now you need a reference marker and this concrete patch, the light grey concrete patch which contrasts with the black tar, that's a very good marker to know where you are exactly on the track. Never use cones as a marker because cones can be moved. So what sort of a marker is there? You need to use something that is permanent on the track, like say a mark on the curb or this different colored concrete patch. That serves as a good reference point. Now that we have our reference point sorted out, it's time to attack the corners. So you brake hard, let off the brake slightly, turn into the corner and that's how you attack the corner. When you're entering the corner, you let off the brake slightly, 
but you're still on the brakes and that is trail braking trail braking what that does is it still keeps weight on the nose there are two benefits to it one because of the weight on the nose the nose turns into the apex better and the second is the weight it actually gives you better grip on the front end and you need front end grip when you're turning into the corner so that's why trail braking is important now when you're braking your nose dives you got more weight on the nose when you left off the brake completely you'll either be flat or you'll have more weight on the rear and your nose is light and you don't want that because that's not going to give you enough grip while you're turning into the corner third vision where do you look you look at the apex always look at the apex you clip your mid corner apex you're looking at your exit apex and that's how you go around a corner vision is very important look where you want to go don't look at things that you're going to hit because otherwise you will hit those things always have your eye peeled out on where you want to go and the car will invariably go there and finally steering technique never turn like this or when you're turning the corner one two three don't saw at the steering wheel it is a horrible driving technique it'll make passengers sick and it will ruin your tires it'll not get you a lap time your steering should be one fast precise motion so i'm going around this corner here one turn that's it it's a tightening corner so i've added a little bit more lock and that's it in this wide open corner turn once and that is it no it's a horrible driving technique so never do that also if you've been paying a keen eye i'm not turning with my hands at 10 to 3 i'm actually preparing before the corner so that when i turn into the corner Yeah my hands are at 10 to 3 and I have got more control when your hands are here and you turn now this is it you don't have any more leverage how do you turn any more that's why I tend to move my hands prepare before the corner and then turn so then I have leverage I can deal with any unpredictable situations and now for the fun bit drifting now drifting is an advanced driving technique and for that we are going to jump into the A45S AMG with drift mode before we get going let's understand how drift mode works on the A45S AMG now unlike the big brothers the E63 and the C63 where the front axle is decoupled completely and becomes only rear wheel drive the A45S remains formatic all the time that is all wheel drive but the secret sauce is the special diff which can send power to the outside and the inside rear wheels depending on what you want to do with it and also your skill level it is very advanced torque vectoring does it work ha, no better way to find out Now first we have to deal with the boring stuff. Number 1, don't do this on a public road. Never ever do this on a public road. Seating position is very important. Now for instance, if you sit in a very laid back driving position, sort of like this, you have no leverage and you cannot control the drift. You cannot put in opposite lock and manage the drift. So you got to sit nice and close to the steering wheel so that you have enough leverage. Get a little bit more in front. So if you see there's a nice bend in my arm and now i have enough leverage to play with the car and then the whole complicated procedure of activating drift mode we start off with sticking it in race now this has race a35 has only sport plus so race that's number 1 number 2 manual on the gearbox number 3 esp completely off man up esp off then you pull both the paddles drift mode confirm paddle up paddle up drift mode activated and now hmm, let's get going apart from the jdm specials four wheel drive cars or all wheel drive cars have never been known to drift they give you great grip great traction but they don't really play around at the limit they understeer but the a45s 
is part of the new breed of all-wheel drive cars. When you floor it, <laughs> so the technique, basically turn into the corner, gas and opposite zip lock. You need to be careful when it swings around, so you've got to be ready to catch it, you've got to be alert. Well, so unlike in a pure rear wheel drive car, we just floor it and you go fully sideways. Here, you still have grip on the front axle pulling you out. So you have to meter the power, but you have to also give a lot of gas. You have to be like really committed. But when you commit, oof, I'm flabbergasted. Basically, I'm turning into the corner. Once I'm turned into the corner, so one precise quick direction change and then give it a boot full of gas. That gets the rear unstuck. And then get off the gas a little bit, not completely because otherwise all the power goes again, becomes all wheel drive and you regain composure. So lift up the gas a little bit and then start metering out the power. So give it a little bit more power than the tires can handle, obviously, so that it oversteers. And then with your steering, you correct. The best way to do this, it doesn't look as dramatic on the outside and you'll see this in the shots where the wheels are pointing straight but that honestly is the most beautiful slide. That is a four-wheel drift on tarmac where there's a lot of grip, grippy Michelin tires but you can get into a beautiful four-wheel drift, your wheels are pointing straight so that means you're putting out all of this power, you're powering out while you're drifting. <sighs> it's the best feeling. In this video, we've run you through performance driving techniques, acceleration, braking, cornering, drifting an all-wheel drive car. These are techniques that every performance car enthusiast should master. And the more you do it, the more you practice, the better you get. In fact, every time we do such kind of videos, we get better, I get better. And also, it is a hell of a lot of fun. In fact, on the sidelines of this video, we got you enthusiasts on the very first Evo India meetup to jump in these cars and experience the thrill of a drifting car. It is a lot of fun. And that's why we love putting such videos together for you guys. So if you enjoy this video, give us a thumbs up share this video with like-minded enthusiasts and let us know in the comments below what should we do a video on next maybe drifting a rear wheel drive amg that should be a lot of fun and also i don't believe i get paid to do this this is my job I... <laughs>